let me say this, all right? Let, let me go ahead and say this. LeBron Ramon James had every right to kick those two country bumpkin ass motherfuckers out of the game, all right? Every right to do it. You got people on social media saying, uh, LeBron James is a crybaby, overreacting, all of this bullshit. First of all, the fans courtside already confirmed what was said. They already confirmed what was said by those two fans. And apparently, it wasn't just those two. They were just chirping the loudest. Okay? I understand that heckling has been a part of sports since the beginning of time. But what was said last night went beyond the pale. And it's really reflective of how much hatred is being spewed toward LeBron James. Now, Russell Westbrook gets a lot of hate. He gets a lot of hate, but it's still usually confined with his actions on the on the court. And some of it is self-inflicted. But with LeBron James, it's going beyond just on the court shit. It's beyond that. And it's beyond politics. It's something else. He's become... LeBron James has kind of become the NBA equivalent of Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama. He's like the replacement for Barack Obama. He's like the rights or the racist lightning rod. He's as close. He's that nigga that they need to fuck with. There's always that nigga they need to fuck with. And it's LeBron James. They need that nigga as that target for their hatred. Barack Obama's no longer in the spotlight. Matter of fact, think about it. When did it start picking up when Obama left the White House? That's when all of this, they, they just need that nigga to hate. I did a video in boxing about that. When Floyd Mayweather started uh, fading away, for a while, it was Andre Ward, right? Then when Andre Ward retired, who did it become? An even bigger target for them, Deontay Wilder, because he preaches his love for his people. But inexplicably, you got coon-ass niggas that hate Deontay Wilder. We see it here on YouTube. So to me, LeBron has become that lightning rod, that six-foot-eight, a six foot nine lightning rod for their hatred. They need, they need the nigga to hate. So, in that aspect, LeBron had every right to kick out that cracked out Alanis Morissette looking bitch and her Dawson Creek reject looking boyfriend, right? And then, you know, she frowns up her face like, you know, like, like, ooh, he's a crybaby, ooh. Nah, you carrot top looking bitch. You don't have the right to say any and everything that you want out your mouth. Or you could say it, but there's always repercussions. That's the problem now a lot of these motherfuckers. They think they can do and say whatever the fuck it is that they want with no repercussions. But when you get out there and you say that, you want LeBron James' son to die in a car accident. And you saying, fuck Bronny. And fuck his family and all this bullshit. That, to me, just shows how despicable a lot of people are in this country. Just completely despicable pieces of shit. And it's not that isolated anymore. It's not isolated. You know how many people I see, I'm sure you see it too on social media, who are co-signing this bullshit, siding with 
these motherfuckers over LeBron James. And the sad thing about it is a lot of these motherfuckers should know better than this. A lot of these motherfuckers look like they could be Bronny or they could be Bronny's friend. And they siding with these fucking rejects. They siding with these motherfuckers. You know, Terrence, Terrence Clark right now should be displaying his skills on a basketball court in the NBA. But he never got to do that because after a routine practice, Terrence Clark died in a car accident when he was only 19 years of age. A long, long time ago, there was a promising young actor named James Dean who many people think would have been one of the great, great stars in cinema history. But unfortunately, he died in a car accident when he was just 24 years old. It wasn't too long ago we lost Kobe Bryant in a helicopter accident, just 41 years of age. Probably the most shocking death we've had in quite some time. Jack Johnson, one of the great boxers of all time, died in a car accident. Rocky Marciano died in a plane crash. Thurman Munson, the great New York Yankees catcher, died in a plane crash. Perhaps the greatest Pittsburgh Pirate player ever, Roberto Clemente, while delivering much needed supplies to earthquake victims in his native Nicaragua, died in December 1972 at age 38. Those who follow baseball, Roy Halladay, a couple years ago, died in a plane crash. He was just 40 years old. The golfing great Payne Stewart died in a plane crash when he was just 42 years old back in October of 1999. And last but certainly not least, Drazen Petrovic, who was on his way to probably an NBA Hall of Fame career, as well as international Hall of Fame career, died in Germany in a plane crash when he was only 28 years of age. We all know that feeling when we found out that all these individuals passed away. I remember when I was, I was a huge fan of Sam Kennison. I remember when I found out when I was just 11 years old, he died in a car crash, a random car crash. To have someone just taken away in an instant in such a reckless, violent manner and to, to, to trivialize it as if it's, you know, something that you, you know, that you're secretly hoping for because you want to add misery to this person's life. You know, you think he's living in this golden uh, life and, you know, you, you, you develop such hatred toward LeBron James for some reason that, you know, it, it, it'll give you pleasure to see him lose his son in a, in a tragic manner that somehow will make your life more meaningful. You are a complete piece of garbage. Anybody co-signing that is complete fucking scum. And if you dislike this video, you're a piece of shit.